Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is how do I discern between normal and what you might consider narcissistic neediness? In other words, this person is coming to the question from a position of depletion. They are depleted. They're broken down. They're worn out. The relationship basically, whether you can admit it to yourself or not, and this is the big key, if you can admit it to yourself that this person is not meeting your needs, then you'd be able to come a little bit more closer to full circle and heat it and healing after sort of being abused taken advantage of and used from a narcissist, male or female, and their neediness. What is an example of neediness? So, in other words, someone in conversation, they want you to react, respond, as if you're, you know, dancing on tax, okay? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got... Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's right. Now, and you have to keep reacting to them. In other words, they're constantly in the spotlight. It is always about them. And people make the confusion that because you are eliciting a reaction and giving it to them, that you are meeting some sort of narcissistic need for them and they will stay in the relationship. That is fallacy erroneous thinking number one. When you begin tap, you know, tap dancing like you're dancing on tacks, walking on eggshells, tippy toeing around your place, your life, your, your workplace, you know, you're, you're shrieking out. You're afraid to even go to the bathroom. Go get a coffee because you might see this person and they might just give you that stare down. Or there's something that they might try to trip you up with. A question. Uh, some sort of other, uh, maybe they're, they're going to exhibit a really close buddy or chum and try to create division. Create a problem. Narcissistic neediness. A narcissist has a pathological sense of their self-importance and it's coupled with basically a disregard for other people's feelings. It doesn't factor into the equation. It, it's not part of their MO, their operating system, but many other people uh, make the mistake with a narcissist is that if you keep basing your needs your happiness on satisfying their needs. It's a very important segment or section for you to understand. When your own need, your needs, instead of taking your own, become replaced in almost like a reinstall, uh, okay? Uh, a reinstall of a catalytic converter. Instead of operating on the highway, living according to your strengths, your self-esteem, whatever that might be, the unfolding of the lotus blossom, the full moon rising, uh, any other Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, Rolling Stone sort of, you know, just monumental sort of feelings, you know, and confusion that works itself out through music, poem writing, comedian, uh, other, you know, movies and, and things, as well as other, you know, um, shows like your Oprah and then you've got your channels right here with Peace and Harmony where we're kind to help you dissect and basically reinstall your own energy to live from and, and understand what that feeling is and then the distinction from that of living within narcissist neediness. Narcissist neediness means they supplant, okay, your needs with theirs. So you no longer have a garden of your own being, sort of, that you're plucking from, you're making sure you're looking forward to. Your sort of agenda um, is not your own, okay? It becomes someone else's. When your agenda, I mean, I can't put it anymore in a nutshell. I mean, I'm glad we're recording this. 
when your agenda becomes someone else's, in other words, it's a falsetto of your of, of you, your being. People don't understand this. The problem is they don't understand this degradation while they're in the midst of it. They're thinking they're doing the best that they can. You think you're doing the best that you can. You are doing the best that you can to live in sort of this reactionary syndrome or kingdom that they sort of create, which can become an unhealthy mechanism if you happen to uh, find yourself in that sort of ancient kingdom of a narcissist uh, creation, you're sort of in a twilight zone. You're where you feel you don't belong. Oh my God, but this person is your family member, your teacher, your boss, your marriage partner. All of a sudden, you feel they make you, and oh, no one can make me feel a certain way, peace and harmony. It's up to you. Well, this is kind of before the electoral uh, democratic emotional process took place, okay? This then slowly becomes other people slowly making decisions for you while you go down a dark hill of self-degradation. You hear about it every day in the news. Kathy Day Grifford, oh my God, whatever injection she's got on her face, it ain't working, okay? She's got eyes going two different directions, cheeks going four directions, and I don't know what she's trying to go for in the makeup area, but it, I mean, it just is awful. She's not even, she becomes like, looks like a, a subhuman. I mean, this is the example of what it's like to like live someone else's agenda. You find you're unrecognizable uh, to yourself. Dissociation, fear that can't be quenched. Uh, you're grinding your teeth. You wake up uh, basically you know, you're throwing away all your teeth because you keep grinding them. By the way, you better get to the dentist, okay, for your own needs. So when your own needs become supplanted, okay, like a female's name, supplanted. I'm sorry, I studied English, psychology, education, masters, okay, uh, individualized curriculum, stuff like that. I've got this vocabulary. We got supplanted, meaning put in you. Uh, basically, supplanted, like in other words, part of your I am. This is getting really esoteric. Uh, this is getting really existential. We better work through it, man, because this will haunt you for a long time, if not a lifetime, not lifetime fitness. Okay, I'm talking for the duration of your life and you're sitting there and you're like 65, 75, 85 and you're still scratching your head. What did I do wrong here? You ain't living in the right programming, okay? Part of this is still, you know, resounding or resonating with you. Part of this supplanting. So it's like the removing of one to put in another, but almost to the point where it's unrecognizable from your own. Cleaning the dishwasher, if that can get you some silence, then that becomes your need, okay? You might not even use said dishwasher, but if they're clamoring and screaming about something being out of order, you might not be a, uh, a plumber, but you're going to go, you're going to try to get a wrench and you're going to try to fix or worry about whatever it is, is their emotional disaster. And the disaster uh, it does not end. In other words, that sort of reactory, um, refractory period where they don't let you come from a guttural, I am, your solar plexus, you know, you're, you're coming from up here. Okay. You know, that um, it's going to destroy your voice box. It's going to destroy your perspective on things. It's going to cause you to feel very volatile, like an emotional lava overflow, you know, spilling onto yourself and you get very hot, like an emotional cauldron. This is when things, the energy is balling up. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just like the, it's almost like uh, explosive brain syndrome. It's just like everything is lit up and that's all you see. See, this is the ploy. This is the exact um, trap 
that a needy narcissist throw in a psychopath that basically they want you to be in. They want you to be in like their emotional uh, cauldron where you're, it's getting a little hot in here, man. This is, uh, I don't know if this is romantic. I don't know if I can afford this. I don't know if I can do this. This is really making me worn out. Uh, something uh, seems off and awry here. We've been at this for too long. You know, you start getting these feelings, but you're not able to vocalize them. And they just seem to seethe and simmer back and forth within. And then this can create a lot of, you know, if you're suppressing, you're, it's a suppression, putting them aside. And then that becomes repression where you're really trying to get rid of them to the never, never land. And you're drinking scotch, whatever it is, bubble bath you're drinking to get rid of it, whatever drugs you're doing, whatever sort of heightened level, uh, you know, or even lower low, uh, is, you know, you can kind of tell the narcissist neediness. It's very percussive. Uh, you can't seem to get away from their shadow. It seems like their spotlight, but it's really their shadow. It's kind of flip-flopped. They seem like they're coming from this number one person um, that's ever come to earth for some reason, or at least into your life. Uh, they've uh, convinced you, or you've convinced yourself that this person, you have an idealized and then kind of a simultaneously a degraded sense of self, okay? But then you el your sense of self is then elevated by their happiness mechanism. So it becomes like this emotional seesaw, and you're not in control. Your way up here, I want to get down. I want to celebrate the holidays with someone. I don't want to be boxed out feeling like half a man, half a woman, not getting it left out in the cold or any, any other asundry, you know, situations you have found yourself in. Okay. Uh, you know, the, uh, and then ultimately becomes the exposure when eventually you start getting unhappy enough where you're, it's hitting enough, you know, pain within you that you honestly now start developing a conversation with yourself. It's time to get moving. Something ain't right here. I can't keep doing this. Okay. And then, you know, you, you, you feel though, but then people then inhibit that mechanism in order to keep a narcissist or psychopathic relationship going. Uh, why is that? It be because it becomes sort of um, out of your control. This relationship will um, indubitably, without a doubt, spin um, violently, aggressively, hastily, or uh, make you look really bad out of control. Okay, that's what they're gaming for. They're putting in a lot of slot chips <laughs> to keep you, you know, to keep you reacting, if you will. It's very, uh, it's a very, it feels very much like a gamey or gambling lifestyle. Like you're banking your future on the next uh, slot poll. Um, how is this conversation going to go? Okay, are they going to be nice to me at this reunion? Are they going to be nice to me at the family? Are they going to be nice to me on Saturday? And you keep pulling this lever and you're living in this sort of hypothetical maybe zone which is floating out there and that puts life sort of out beyond your reach um, when you're in sort of narcissistic neediness, when you're getting in into the fact that, you know, you just go, you know what, it's not, I'm not, we're not equal. Um, so, and it doesn't matter their age, their position, male or female, same sex. But when you begin to say, okay, something is uneven, unparalleled, and you can't oftentimes get it out in the open because this individual does not see the perspective from where you're coming. They don't know what it's like to be in the mezzanine. They don't know what it's like to be in um, the coach, okay, uh, part of the airplane. Um, you know, these narcissists, all they know is to gloat and to walk over people 
and to basically try, the more that they can flatten the higher they stand so not all leaders do this obviously but some there is sometimes a flattening of others i feel uh to get them to where they 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 want their charges uh to be or basically be without be without okay be without their presence uh, I'm sorry, you know, I can't uh, be there uh, for you on this uh, sacred occasion. Um, or they're drunk, they're tired, they're, you know, uh, talking to their, their friends, or they're talking with another group, and they, you know, they're, they have this aloofness, specialness, ooh, you know, what else do you have to do? How high do you have to jump? Um, what else do you need to do to, to flail? And basically then what becomes, which is really problematic, um, and which is a viewer um, had suggested, or maybe, no, it was something that I was reading, is what happens then is if you um, habituate that, if you have within you, if you get that emotional habit of that reaction, your, your body um, has that within it. Almost like a, a dance it could do. Oh, I mean, but you know what? The further you get out of the narcissist relationship, you won't be able to do that dance anymore. Body won't do it. It will not self-sabotage itself. Your body, you know, if you really work with these healing tools that we discuss here, um, to understand the boundaries, that you deserve to have a boundary, which is me, which means where you stop, you know, and, and, and they end. So acknowledge and validate eye contact. Oh my God, is this not happening? Okay. Direct body positioning, honest communication, i.e. from the truth, not from sort of pipe dream. I can't be there. You know, whatever excuse they're too important. They're too talented. Uh, they're in the crow kit, you know, you're in the tail spin and wouldn't you love to be riding up with them again? So, and then people then, you know, then they weigh back and forth and then they basically go through the gamble. And, and so what they're, what they're then reinforcing is the abuse in the relationship. You don't realize it, but you're keeping yourself in that, in that very small reactive narrow um, lifestyle or what your body then feels as a sense of I am um, not talented uh, uh, shallow don't have what it takes not good looking whatever you know don't have don't have whatever invisibility I mean is basically what they say you you feel you you can't show up in life if you do you don't want, know what that means if you show up it's pretty scary. You want to get out of there because your body automatically begins the panic. What do I need to do now? Um, you know, do I need to cut my hair, shave my whatever, uh, change my underwear for them? Oh, when you're, you know, changing your underwear, changing your uh, hairstyle, the color to, to appease them or any such a sundry of your own personal, you know, to, and you have to override yourself. Like, you're going to be this. Um, you're going to be this sort of down person that I get to say, you know, it begins to pop up like a jack in a box. You're alive now. No. If you, um, in a, and, and but the problem is, is there's this invisible sort of cloaking or it's kind of an entrainment or I feel a real quantum mechanism which means we're growing in consciousness and awareness. And you guys better get there before the coming of this AI. I mean, you know, this AI stuff is really daunting. Like, check out Elon Musk and, and all this stuff. You know, you have to realize that you, it's okay to take health, happiness, and prosperity and your dream, you know, fulfilling your life into your own hands and out of theirs. So it's kind of like taking your eyeballs back out of their whatever and putting it back in your own head uh, so that you can feel head to toe, I matter. Um, and that you're, then that begins driving your life. It becomes a whole different driving mechanism. Uh, you don't know if it's going to work. 
Uh, it's very scary. People find it difficult uh, to change, but sometimes the contrary um, isn't very welcoming. Because you're so used to rhythmically responding, um, like uh, the Janet Woods uh, book, oh, gosh, she wore, uh, Janet, she wrote a book about uh, adult children of alcoholics, what it's like to live in an alcoholic um, household. In other words, you know, um, it's in it very much the, the PTSD, that um, post-traumatic stress syndrome that occurs in those people that are kind of always living, you know, there's more going on within their four walls than right outside. You know, talk about being ganged up on having weapon, you know, all this sort of fear that you, you know, you hear. Sometimes there's more volatility going on in the household than out in the streets. So, you know, <clears throat> just dealing with that can become a skill uh, that has to develop in and of itself, but it becomes sort of a weird um, biological instinct that you have to be conscious of because it will deplete your energy. Like, it will take your identity. And the problem, what, it, what does that mean? For example, um, it, it'll take a part of you. You know, you want a piece of me, Britney Spears. You know, you almost feel like part of you is being bitten off by the flesh. You know, they want your flesh. No, uh, thank you. This belongs to yours truly. Go away, okay? Um, and having the ability to say go away. Oftentimes, those people who are around narcissistic neediness, they have never been able uh, to tell their shadow, which they think is their spotlight, which they think is the best relationship or whatever, uh, lie you begin pipe dreaming to yourself. Um, puts you in the shadows and unrecognizable. Where's my hand? You know, one of these efforts, you know, very sort of, where am I? Who am I? What am I interested in? What are my skills? What are my interests? You know, how do I develop these? Uh, what are they? Uh, they can become unrecognizable because you're so used to living in denial, suppression, repression. Couldn't talk about these. Couldn't do this back then. I didn't have a voice. I didn't have an eye. I didn't have an ear. I didn't have a heart, a shoulder. I didn't have a chance. You know, there. You know. I didn't have a, a, a chance, this just, and it becomes a shame. So that will sort of shackle you. Uh, anyone want to live in shackles? I think this has to become then a conscious question. If you have been around narcissist neediness, meaning it's always about them, laugh at them, look at them, uh, their clothes, them, their shoes, car, uh, family, job, anything, health, them. I mean, and they'll tease you with a little, here's about you, and then here's about them. I mean, they'll do the little tease, and then they'll make you feel bad. What, do, what, do you didn't hear me? Hello? You know, it's the old new thing on the phone. How do you, uh, what's passive aggression on the phone now? Hello? Hello? Can you hear, you know, it's that sort of, you know, uh, sort of, it's just a, don't engage in that, people, okay? Uh, don't live in that storm. Uh, the storminess is sort of what's the debilitating factor <laughs> in the relationship. And, you know, yeah, everybody loves a good storm, but maybe watch it from indoors. If you want to find other people's uh, battles and maybe want to just see what it's, watch, there's all sorts of media you can watch. It doesn't mean you have to participate or live like that. How do you discern this then? How do you give yourself permission to go, that's not going to be my identity. See, they, they kind of take your identity in that codependent where you might need their support. In other words, they're, you know, they might have supported you, but that's what the love bombing is in the beginning. You know, make, and then, but, and then the problem again with the hover, which means you've said, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to self-sabotage because ultimately if you've been living in narcissist neediness, like Janet Ward said, you know, if you're living in, um, sort of a, in, an environment, uh, and, you know, constantly chronically 
where there's alcoholism, for example, you know, uh, the post-traumatic stress syndrome, you, you hear the cabinet opening, <gasps> you know, you go like that. Oh, here it comes. You hear it closed. Oh, you go like that. You know, you it's, you know, and then here comes the drinks and then here comes the, the sloppy talking. And then here comes the ridicule or sarcasm. And then here comes the love and then here comes the dinner. So it becomes sort of, they're in control but you're sort of outside witnessing and kind of becoming like this caretaker. Uh, rescue uh, the, the narcissist, rescue uh, the psychopath, help them, save them from this uh, conundrum that they're under because you can certainly be a, a great gal or chum and, and help them out of this you know, uh, emotional drowning, alcoholism. You don't have to drink like that. We can have more fun. You don't have to drug like that. You don't have to, you know, and then you try to show them the way, you know, there's this sort of reacting to this neediness. Um, and then you see that they have a, a very different uh, side to them other than that neediness. They become someone you don't know, uh, you don't recognize. They want to be alone. Uh, they're not the person. They brood. They bleed. Whatever it is, it's something magical uh, that you have to then tiptoe around on. Now you're getting uh, foot surgery because you've got foot problems. Now you're uh, basically you haven't had a a good date, a good dinner in God knows how long. You know you forget what socialization even is, or wondering if people do that on the earth anymore. You know, you're get, it's very problematic when you sort of get out of this type or style of relationship. Why? Because so much of what you feel you're good at, like Celine Dion today, all I know how to do is sing. Like, um, I think you can, you're probably a lot and that, and she's probably successful enough that she can take care of her health. Like this, <clears throat> neurological uh, situation that she's, you know, got a stiff arm, you know, that's neurology. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So what, you know, what, what is this, what does this then mean though? You know, these, these uh, dramatic people, um, and, and how do you find basically your own heartbeat and how do you feel safe again? People can't even put a little toe outside they become afraid of the world or you know when it becomes a long period of time furthermore they don't want to have anything to do you i don't need you from my past you're you're just my stepping stone i you know and they don't realize that maybe you know that other people get the credit for helping you you know kind of get where you are Get them where they are. Get them um, some good experiences. Get them some good meals. Whatever it is, vacations, moments. You can't, they will deny your, this is problem number 58, is that they will deny your contribution. Part of their neediness, I think, um, buckles back into them needing to keep a blind eye to others and their true, you know, it's part of their pathology is not only lying to you, but they do the same to themselves. So they lie and I mean, really in depth that to the part, you know, oh, you know, yeah, I'm going to get this rock and roll album or whatever they're saying, or I'm going to do this business. What, you know, they're, they very much have a lot of fantasy that you very much can't participate in or they have a very small group of people like alcoholics do, you know, um, I'm going out with these friends, you know, you can't participate, you can't keep up with uh, us, you know, or whatever their, their excuse is. Alcoholics, you know, will change their state. The narcissist is very similar. They'll change their state. And then people, do I have to tap dance to get you guys to, you know, do you have to freeze? Do you have to disappear? Do you have to hide under the bed, you know, that's where the hiding, oftentimes it's like, you know, you're waiting for the new existential shoe to drop, like, oh, what now, you know, in other words, that you have a feeling that you can't handle, you, you develop this sort of fear of getting degraded again somehow, even though, 
you know, once you've sort of healed from it and you realize that you do not need to give in, you do not need to be a pigeon um, when they're an eagle. You are not a pigeon. You are not a dodo. You are an eagle. You are a pristine human spirit that is pure in nature. And that is, you know, where you're, you're coming from when you heal. You realize that part of you has been denied or sort of beyond neglected. It's sort of been um, almost like there's been a desire to, you know, like the Donnie in the electric color dream coat, make an invisibility out of you, but use you for your, your whatever reaction, your whatever you give, whatever, you know, there's something, and it's sort of this degrading. And the problem is, and we're going to wrap it up here, when, you know, when you're on this sort of journey to healing, and this person or individuals begins to constantly or, you know, text you um, during your work, um, three in the morning, um, and say some things that, you know, are supposed to elicit you. That is the most disrespectful thing that they can do. It's, it's so um, emblematic of their necessity to use people that they can help themselves to anyone else's calendar, schedule, family obligations, need for health matters, need for to enter a uh, certain serious uh, parts of their life. Like, you know, I'm serious. I'm not just uh, living your pipe dream or, you know, believing all your lies anymore, or I see these ways and these are not um, pleasantries or even respect or acknowledgement of the very even foundation of your being. So that's the pathology. There, This is a syndrome, a situation, whether you want to say it's an attachment disorder, it, it, it is. They have a problem. They, even though they're great, wonderful, Britney Spears, uh, Lady Gaga, uh, whoever else you want to put in there, uh, whoever else, you fill it in. Obama, Abraham Lincoln, Jesus Christ, the Baha'i, uh, nine, I mean, it doesn't matter. They have a pathology. They have subjected and then continue to subject others to painful states of living that aren't beneficial for those, but they continue to aggravate them into this neediness way of relating. You know, you are not a punching bag, a float doll, a uh, a rent for a day, uh, Uber, whatever. You're not a B and B uh, for them, uh, for them to stay over. You know, you're not there as a sobering uh, place system for them, and you're going to take them in because they profess all sorts of things, and you're going to have them, uh, quote unquote. Uh, become sober from the way they've been treating you or their ways of living, whatever other lies. Remember, it's not only the lie that it's the lies that they're telling themselves. So they have a very specific way of relating. You must recognize that you need validating. And part of their system or syndrome is Um, is that, you know, is that you, that style that they are, you know, inhabiting, it's not healthy. It's, it pulls you down. It pulls you out of, you know, your hood spot, your mojo, your being, your I am, your future that you can look forward to and a good future you do have, but you might have to get rid of a lot of crud. Um, you know, times when you didn't say no, um, you know, or the, the different things. Maybe you fell off the recovery wagon. You, uh, you, you got back to them. You know, oh, you know, you fell for their tactics. Don't let anyone help themselves to your calendar schedule, peace of mind, okay? 
you need to keep number one champion captain captainista over that area within peace of mind what does it feel like when you you don't have to be degrading them you do not have to have a degraded sense of them you do not have to have an idealized sense of them you know it's almost better if you just come back within and realize that you have needs, wants, desires, wishes, and abilities of your own, which you would like to call forth and bring into your life, even though you don't know what they are yet. See, there's this mystery area when you begin to grow where it can sort of be like, okay, I am on sure footing. You know, you might take a while to get there, but the narcissist neediness, might continue to get in your hair, get out of here, begin to have a declarative sense um, of, of, your, of yourself, more declarative, I am, <clears throat> and becoming, meaning you do have something to look forward to, and not what they have said is worth looking forward to, but really determining what is it really for you and your core value right now that you can stretch within? Not that you have to stretch for them, but you can begin to develop and harness and practice a little bit more of your own signature that as it pertains to you and your self-responsibility to your gut that they might have protected you from. So part of you know that is that they can kind of the way that they shield themselves from reality truth is the way that they can also shield others. So it can feel kind of like, is it going to be a cold world out there if I come into healing my own, um, being able to rip myself away, being able to divorce, move, get a new job, study, stop looking their way, stop um, being disgusted by them, stop... Uh, saying, you know, so in other words, don't, don't let that rule your roost, your I am, your internal real estate, okay? Um, find that place and enhance it, appreciate it. Give time to interior design it. Not what they want, wish, because oftentimes that will become embedded and then they'll have the full trickery like, oh, Maybe now you're strong enough and now, yeah, you can come back. We're, we're all grown up now. No, it's not like that. Okay. You're not, that's, it's okay to declare. I no longer need to be evaluated in a relationship in this manner, or I no longer need to evaluate the person for this sort of situation that's going to hurt me. So part of getting in relationships now, after you've been in that sort of percussiveness and sort of that like reactionary, sort of that urgency, giving yourself to another, you know, um, and not having for yourself. Maybe you've gotten really good. You've healed some. So now become and, and fulfill your own need your own need to explore, your own need to become resourceful, your own need to discover. You might discover that you're, you know, that you have some really valley moments where you're, and then you can say, you know what, I don't want to, how can I sort of do my down me better? In other words, how can I sort of, instead of trying to be so flippant, and how can I do the down me better? What is going to be required? How can I do my recovery date about that? And then come back from my recovery date, a better, stronger, wiser person. In other words, discover and explore internally and externally. What does it mean to fulfill, you know, to follow an interest, a relationship, doing something different, you know, something you couldn't imagine, getting a new car. Hey, I want to downgrade. 
I want to upgrade. Not because of them, because of you now. You want to start saving. You want to start a travel account. You want to start um, seeing other, oh my God, other countries again, the pandemic. There's a great um, channel that I watch here called Matthew Posa and his Outdoor Adventures. And he has this like great um, channel where he takes his dog, um, which looks like Lassie, it's a collie, and another, um, which his name is uh, Ruger, okay, is his one dog's name. And Monty is the name of the collie. So if you're in my generation, you might have remembered the TV show, like, not I Love Lucy, um, Rescue, I can't even remember, God, I wish I, I'm not going to Google it, but remember that dog that always rescued a person and they were, you know, a, a, it'll come to me. Well, someone will probably comment about it, but there's a channel if you like, um, it's really cute called Matthew Posa and his outdoor adventures. And he goes out like on his canoe, he brings his dog, Monty and Ruger. They go out fishing. You see all the cool walleye, bass, pike that he's fit, you know, catching, throwing in the canoe, Matthew Posa. Oh my gosh. It is so exciting. He goes camping. But, and he usually does it in the boundary waters, um, up in Minnesota by, and by Canada. But he has a new little blurb where he's out there in Thailand and he's like, totally flip the switch, you know, and it's really exciting. So like, how can you flip the switch for yourself? We're just going, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is all about me. I am in love to craft. I am a good painter and not for them or, you know, and you're not even worried or constantly thinking about this person and their needs. You're no longer dressing. Your wardrobe doesn't have whatever, all the different clothing that they made you to wear or whatever it is that you, they, the, the job that you were in, whatever it is, you know what it is. It's sort of like a yuck around you. And you're going, you know what, this is the authentic me that can survive. And even if you haven't thrived, you, you're kind of getting there, you know, kind of peeking out to the, to the thrival, peeking out into the internal real estate. Do I really have good footing? Am I really blessed right now? Being in the digital age, being where I am, having food, clothing, shelter, lighting, heat, cool, whatever it is. Do I really have at my fingertips some great things? And can I definitely say, beyond shadow of a doubt, I'm not going back to making my needs the fulfilling of needs for anyone or everyone to the extent that it, it, it possessed of me before. And I can appreciate that like a relic, like nostalgia, like a picture, like an antique, like a, even maybe you don't even have an appreciation for that anymore. Maybe it's a big blank, long period of time. And that makes you feel sick. <laughs> You're like that whole period of time, man, it's gone or it's dark or it's, you know, it's, I don't have, what did I, you know, well, maybe because you were swept up in that tsunami where you were sort of fulfilling what you thought was your life's purpose in that sort of really magnetic intertwine and mesh part of your life's journey where you were doing the best you can and you do, and but you're emerging from beyond sort of those. And so how do you cut it out? Is it okay? to not be as responsive, to be, you know, to start, you know, breaking your back for other people and to stop way before that. In fact, you, we, you know, on the channel, I really want to work to prevent the recovery date, the recovery gift in your advanced stages. It all becomes then about prevention. Okay. Once you start getting out of it, you're doing that drive home, not doing that again, you know, or you're doing that drive out of there from the job or wherever, not, oh man, okay, I can see it now, I can really see it now, and you're beginning to develop a little bit of trust within, oh my God, I really do see what happened, I'm the only one, and you go, oh my God, I'm the only 
I'm the only, oh my, I'm the only one and you're really hurt, you know, but you will get through the gradients of healing. You will trust me on this. You can do this and say, you know, part of, of what you want to do is I want to shorten the time. Okay. You know, now that it's taken me maybe even several decades to really get solidified, you know, like a tiny tree kind of getting up there. You know, this tree kind of looked like poison ivy. Maybe now after some time, it's getting to look like a tree. You got a tree out there, you know. Find a tree out there, a little tree, and name it, okay. Go out, and, and this is kind of a, a good healing thing. You know, find like a, a true partner of growth. If you can't find it in a person, find or find it in something, find a tree a baby tree, go out on a walk that you may, and adopt a little tree and go, you know what, little maple, little oak, little whatever it is, I'm going to check up on you. Every time I walk by, I'm going to say hi and I'm going to acknowledge and validate your being. And I'm going to tell you how good you've grown. Look at you grow. Look at you go. And develop a relationship with this growing living being known as a tree. Okay, trees are wonderful things to have relationships with. Okay, they can give you a lot of protection, fruit, food, uh, birds, um, colors, beautiful needles uh, for the evergreens, including they stand a lot of, for a lot of different things in relationships. Oh, we're do down by the, the kissing tree, the kissing tree or whatever. You're riding some horse down by some sort of tree. I don't know, but whatever it is, when it comes back to your I am and developing, you know, and you, you validate that and you go, you know, and you begin to, and you begin then to develop a relationship away from that degraded sense. And, and as you get bigger and stronger, just like this tree, you'll begin to look more, life will look to be recognizable a little bit more the way to your liking. Not, you know, to the place where you've been quashed, you know, hi tree, yeah, let me stand on you and break you down so I can make a path for me. No, that's not what you do. And it's kind of like a, a Native American. It just sort of came to me um, after I went to a powwow um, in, a, in a place around here. This was several years ago before the pandemic. And I, I'm very... Um, fascinated and interested and inspired by the Native American lifestyle connection to land, okay, connection to the moon, uh, the sun, and the seasons and the way they move things. <clears throat> I don't know uh, that much about them, but that sort of after that powwow, and I, it was so cool because if you all ever get a chance to go to a powwow, I would recommend it. It's where the Native American um, can come out in their um, sort of tribal um, attire and they have other things and they will do dances, songs, they might have saging, they, you might learn a lot and they have some really great causes that you're work, they're working for. I mean, my gosh, talk about the politics and trying to save the planet. I mean, like the great George Carlin, you know, was always laughing about all the people who were trying to save the planet. And George Carlin is like, you guys, don't worry, the planet's gonna save itself. It's been here for like 500 billion years. <laughs> it can take care of itself. So let's, you know, so it's so, I'm just trying to throw some humor in there. But anyway, when we're talking about that Native American, you know, what other sort of mentor, um, culture, um, or sort of area of interest, just as a little flicker, has a little bit of, of interest to you. And how can you pursue and nurture that and have like a mentor or something up in your area? So, in or like a, a written piece of paper where you write down, like, I am going to go and do this, you know, as part of my recovery gift to myself to sort of solidify something that I, I need to do within, you know, that I, I need to do. For some reason, you know, and even if you don't feel like you're good or the best, get rid of that feeling. Okay, that's not what, I mean, if you don't, get rid of that feeling. Um, 
I can't do my date the right way. Stop that thinking, okay, just whatever it is. Even if you go outside and say, I am stronger, and you repeat that a hundred times, and you do that once a week, and you keep that going for a year, I think you're going to be stronger. I think you are. Anyone tried it? Anyone? You know, or these other esoteric things like, you know, developing your interests. Um, you know, these things that you need to follow and pursue. Just like that appreciation of land, you know, we're talking about finding a deep rooted connection. And that deep root, you might want to find and honor and establish. Because the good old narcissist or psychopath, they might have really had you, but they're not in charge of digging the deep root uh, down within you. That is your what you cast your eyes on. And really what is so important, if you can understand the gravity and importance of what you gaze your eyes on, it's a form of consumption. So it's very important that you look at and differentiate and understand what you are consuming through your eyes, ears, your energetic field, you know, your aura, what people might, you know, the energetic, emotional field, your signature, your, you know, your gravitas, your I am. You know, for example, if you're, you see a holy person and you see them walk and you go, no one needs to tell me that. I know that's a, a holy person. You know, when you, that's their etheric field, you know, something or the contrary. God, that person's creepy. No way. You know, you get this feeling. You don't know why. Your gut just knows before you do. You have a subconscious that kind of knows and sees before it, be, you know, it becomes. So part of you, part of the, and I'm the quantum field and quantum healing, like in the book that I'm working on, is part of understanding, appreciating, and inhabiting that field, which is like kind of like the nameless, but is the source of all sort of this area. What does this mean? Where is this going for you or me? What does it mean for healing your relationships? Uh, and, and being, you know, solidifying and strengthening you. So your resiliency, it, you know what this means for you. In other words, when a hover comes, a narcissist neediness comes, trying to break you down, sucker you in, do this, do that. And instead, you don't flinch, flail, you stand in inner peace. Then you know you've got good, healthy perspective. Your recovery dates are working. The tools of understanding that you possess, own, and inhabit this in interior real estate, which can grow, right, in value and, and et cetera with time. And especially it can, and, and be careful, and part of it is knowing that in the past, in whatever it is, that devaluing and discarding is no longer part of the segment that you're inhabiting. In other words, they can't even reach there. You're, you become like in the penthouse of your, view, of your being, and meaning all that other scuttlebutt, it doesn't bother you, it doesn't, you know, you you know, you have something deeper and deeper rooted within, which you find is can, can weather the storms, can, doesn't break, um, and instead is able to sort of appreciate and then try for yourself in terms of growing. You can then say from a, a, a healthy place, you know what, instead of an unhealthy place, this is what I, what I need or want. And it's going to be different. It's going to feel different and be different than before. So you might feel like a real infant baby. I don't know how to do this, but you can sure go out there. You will do it. You will try and you'll succeed, especially as you keep it consistent. You'll really reap the rewards. This is your buddy. Peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share Please subscribe and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day.